How do you make a delicious keto pie? Well, today on WTF, we're going to show you how to make the perfect keto pie crust, a keto lemon curd, and even a keto meringue. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Now here on WTF, every week we cover unique ingredients, techniques, and show you recipes for your kitchen. So remember to subscribe and stick around for our weekly giveaway. This week, Scott and I are showing you how to make a great keto pie crust and, of course, a keto pie recipe. And Scott, this is, uh, I would say, one of the most requested keto recipes since we started tackling them. Mm -hmm. And I guess when you started thinking about it, because you've done a few keto recipes now, what, was the, what did you find to be very challenging about making a good pie crust? So pie crust is difficult because the building block is not there, flour is not there. So we have to find alternatives that give you that same texture. It's uh, tender, but it's also crumbly, it's flaky. Mm -hmm. All those things need to be in this pie crust, which we think we found. We have a really delicious pie crust here. Uh, it's relatively simple to put together, and it works the same way as regular pie dough, so it's okay. not like this weird process, right? Okay, perfect. I think today we just need to jump yeah. right into that demo. So uh, first is almond flour, and almond flour is gonna add that um, one kind of a rich flavor, and it's also going to help with the browning, which you can see they brown up really beautifully. Mm -hmm. The next one gives us that almost mealy texture that we get when we have like a pie crust, and that is coconut flour. So mm -hmm. coconut flour humid, gives us that little mealy texture. It doesn't really impart too much coconut flavor, mm -hmm. especially when we are you know, getting into this recipe with the, the lemon curd we're going to make and the meringue. You don't really taste any coconut, cool. but you know, that <clears throat> that texture is super important. Mm -hmm. Some salt. It is humid in yeah. the kitchen today. <laughs> Surprisingly, then, it's not that hot. No, it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. uh, an ingredient that's very important to this is transglutaminase. Mm -hmm. uh, so transglutaminase, TI, is what we're using. And we're using that because it will grab onto the egg that's in here and kind of set the entire mixture. Mm, okay. That's the really important thing that we're looking for, is it's going to grab the proteins in that egg and really set the mixture. And when I say set, it's not going to set like a gel or anything, but when I roll it, it's going to be less prone to cracking. Mm -hmm. It's going to hold on to the, uh, the shape really well, as well as something like the uh, cream cheese that we're putting in is going to help bond to that too. So okay. we're really going to have a lot of uh, hold in our recipe here and we're not going to have to worry about it, you know, falling apart. And just as a normal pie crust, we have our butter here and we're going to cut it up just as we would. So I'm going to put this in here and I'm just doing the butter right now. I'm not going to add the cream cheese yet. So I'm just going to pulse it a few times until I get those pea sized um, mm -hmm. bits of butter. Check, make sure, one or two. Good. Good. So this is exactly what we're looking for. Just little bits of butter mixed in there. Because when I start to roll this out, I want those bits of butter to get nice and flat, which gives us just a little bit of that mm -hmm. lift that we're looking for. Yeah, and I think the TI is really kind of the secret here, because I know people have made a lot of different keto mm -hmm. pie recipes, um, but it seems like that the ability to roll them out has been um, a difficult. It's difficult, so, right? Yeah. So yes. Uh, so then I placed in my um, cream cheese. I'm going to put in my egg, and then just a little bit of water, not too much. About two teaspoons, and I'm just going to mix this until it comes together. I don't want to beat this up too too much. Mm -hmm. I just want to mix it until it comes together because I don't want to break up that butter any more than it already is. So this, just like a pie crust, I can form it into a puck, and then I can place it in the refrigerator, cut it, and then roll it out mm. just like I did uh, you know, with a regular pie crust. So it works just as yeah, you want it to. We're going to show you guys great. Mm -hmm. how to do that too. So you'll be able to see it right after this, um, just so you can see how we got it into these uh, pie tins. 
Awesome. So that's the first part of it. And then we need to fill the pie with something. Mm -hmm. So we went with a lemon curd. So we have a few ingredients here. The first one is lemon juice, which tends to have quite a bit of carbs. Mm -hmm. One cup has around 17 grams of carbs, but you're never going to eat a whole pie. And this is kind of like a treat, <laughs> you know? So if you want to do less than this, you absolutely could cut it in half. Mm -hmm. This whole recipe works out to about uh, four net carbs per slice. Okay. So that's really nice. It's still a very uh, low amount of carbs, but it can also be a treat um, because it's still sweet with the sweetener that we're going to talk about in just a moment here. Sure. And let me pour it into this bag. Now, the reason why we're putting it into a bag is because this is a very temperature controlled recipe. I don't want to put this onto a pot and start cooking it because there's egg yolks in it. Mm -hmm. which then will turn into scrambled eggs. Mm -hmm. So I'll put my egg yolks in with my lemon juice here. Mm -hmm. Little bit of salt. Another kind of key ingredient is gelatin. Now the reason why we're using the gelatin is when we cut that pie, we don't want it to completely ooze out. Mm -hmm. And we're not using too much gelatin to where it's like a chewy right. curd, right? Mm -hmm. I want it to just slice and just hold its shape. So it's about two sheets to this entire recipe. And then butter. That's so much butter. <laughs> yes. So it's very rich and you can see the color when it's done. It's, it's a nice kind of creamy color. So this will then go uh, get sealed if you have like a, a vacuum seal, you could use that. Or if you have uh, like a food saver at home, you mm -hmm. could use that. Seal this and cook it at 167 degrees for 30 minutes. All right. And that's going to perfectly cook those eggs so that when we blend it up, the gelatin and the eggs and everything will emulsify perfectly and then we can add our sweetener. Yeah. And, you know, of course in our kitchen we usually use an immersion circulator. Yes. But if someone at home doesn't have an immersion circulator, do you have a workaround for them for this? Yeah. So you can use a double boiler mm -hmm. and a thermometer. That's the best way you can do it. Uh, if you wanted to blend all these up and do it that way, that's probably going to be your best bet mm -hmm. uh, rather than just putting you know everything in into a pot and having them melt at different times because those eggs are going to sink to the bottom and cook. So you want to blend them up really well. And then just put them over a double boiler and stir it. Uh, rule of thumb in a kitchen is if you put it on the back of a spoon and you make a line in it and it doesn't drip through that line, it's, it's good. It's called nap egg. Um, but I would definitely use a thermometer because when it comes under, it comes up to 167 degrees Fahrenheit, then you can just pull it off and add your sweetener. Yeah, and I think if you don't have an immersion circulator, it might be worth just checking out one. There's such great kitchen tools for doing precise cooking, yes. temperature control, and there are a lot of affordable models now on the market. You know, our favorite home for the home cook is definitely the Jewel. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of ones out there. You know, Google it. <laughs> so, okay, so, all right, so once they've done this for the right temperature, for the right amount of time, um, what's next in that process? So we are adding allulose to this. Mm -hmm. And with other sweeteners, we could add it directly to this bag. But with allulose, adding protein and then any heat sometimes changes the color. It causes a Maillard reaction, which is the browning. Mm -hmm. I don't want this to get brown. I want this to have that perfect kind of, you know, orangey, yellow, lemon curd color. Right. So I'm going to blend in my allulose at the end oh. after it's heated. That way I completely, you know, don't have to worry about, oh, it's going to, you know, brown my allulose. I'm going to have to have this weird looking lemon curd. No, nope, I just do it at the end. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to replace this with a, a sweetener that you like on your own, that's absolutely fine. You can put it right in here. We just like allulose because it tastes the most like table sugar. Mm -hmm. And doing it this way, we're not going to have to worry about any browning. Okay, that's great. So we're going to be right back. And when we come back, we are going to check out what's happening with this great pie. All right, and we're back. But before we slice into these pies, I wanted to take a moment to talk about this week's giveaway. So this week, we are giving away the ingredients you see here, which will be the transglutaminase, gelatin, and allulose that you'll need to make this particular pie recipe. And in order to enter the win, just leave in the comments below another baking challenge that you would like to see us take on here in the test kitchen. All right, so Scott, I'm excited about this pie. It looks <laughs> amazing. Um, 
You want to talk a little bit about the baking process before we cut into it, you know, the finishing touches? Yeah. So it's, it's very simple. You blind bake it just like you would a, a regular pie crust. Uh, I just roll it out, fit it to the pan, uh, put in, you know, some weights with uh, some paper so it doesn't, you know, fall in on the sides. Mm -hmm. That's basically all I did. Trim up the edges, fill it with the, uh, the lemon curd. The lemon curd can go in once it's cooled. It'll set in there really nicely, mm -hmm. and then you just make a meringue, and you pop, pipe it on the top. And then you just give it the final touches with just uh, a little torch here. Ooh. You don't want to overdo it, because you don't want to burn the crust. That just looks fun. It is. <laughs> Never gets old. Mm -mm. So we have that, and then we can take this, and we can just show you, you know, perfectly slice that pie in half. And you see how wonderful it looks. It's going to be a little Ooh. crumbly. It is pie crust, mm -hmm. but it's great. If you want to try it, Janie. I definitely do. And while I'm uh, shoving pie into my face, <laughs> do you want to talk a little bit about the keto meringue that we used here? Because yeah. I know we, we're, not, we're not demoing it on mm -hmm. camera, but I'm sure people are interested in how you got it. <clears throat> so it's very simple. It's just egg whites. And then mm -hmm. I add a very small amount of allulose to it just until you know you get those peaks you don't need to add a ton of allulose mm -hmm. because uh, one the torching would happen really fast and two the allulose likes to um, uh, stay in its liquid form so you're just adding a little bit just to sweeten it up mm -hmm. so you're able to make a meringue because it's egg whites still mm. if you wanted to make this with no egg whites and you wanted to use something like an aquafaba uh, you know for a different recipe you absolutely could but this is great because you know you could still use egg whites it's mm -hmm. still keto yeah, this probably is really, really good. So, oh, sorry, still eating. <laughs> the crumb here, it's very short, it's soft, you know, it's buttery, it's tasty. I'm, I'm not really getting any hint of the coconut mm -hmm. in here, really. But I don't think it would be bad even if you did. Yep. Um, and it's sweet, but what I, I mean, one thing I like about Elulose is that it's, to me, just sweet enough. So this yeah. is not like an overwhelmingly, like, sweet, sticking to your teeth kind of yeah. pie. It's light, it's um, like a great texture. I think it will be an amazing pie. And of course, yeah. we can get the recipes and we'll kind of show you all the steps in our reels and our shorts later this week. Now, before we wrap up, I think one question that some people might be thinking is like, oh, this is, looks like a great crust recipe. Can I use this to make like an apple pie? You know, can I do like the, yeah, uh, the double, crust. The double yeah. crust? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you absolutely could. It, still would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, I would suggest giving it just a quick blind bake. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be your best bet, just to make sure the bottom is set um, and you know it doesn't get soggy or something like that. That way you can slice it and pick it up, you know, very much like this. Not, not having to worry about it falling apart, crumbling, anything like that. Mm -hmm. So just give it a quick blind bake, but yeah, fill it with whatever keto filling you want, roll it over the top and make a little vent and you have a, a double crust pie. Awesome. Well, hopefully you are excited to try either this recipe or your favorite pie recipe and see how it turns out for you. And let us know what you think and what kind of pies you like. So until next week, from here in a modernist pantry test kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garrett.